Welcome to the On Point Woman with Dr. Ronnie. I'm Dr. Ronnie Adesani, and I'm excited that you join me again today. I have with me a very wonderful couple. I met them a few months ago. I think I met them earlier on this year, but I've seen so much about their lives that's exciting, and I believe they'll be a blessing to us today. So I have with me in the studio Larry and Adi Ajibadi. They will be sharing with us today their first decade in review. They are married, young couple, and I I'm just so excited that they have joined us today because I think there is so much we can learn from their personal experience as a couple. And for somebody who's been married for many years myself, I always love to see young people that are happily married and having a great testimony of the faithfulness of God. So both of you, welcome. How are you doing today? You're doing well, thank you. Doing great, thank you very much. I'm really excited. I can't wait for you to get started today. I am looking forward to hearing everything that God has put in your heart to share with us. So tell us about yourselves first, and then we can get cracking on your testimonies. Uh, ladies first. All right. All right, Free sure. Check. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for having us on today. Um, I'm, my full first name is Ade Busala Ajibade, but yes, I'm happy to go by Ade today. Um, we've been married, my husband and I have been married for 10 years. We got married in Delaware. Um, and, you know, I would say if I had to caption our marriage testimony, I'd call it the Isaac and Rebecca marriage. And I can speak more to that later on. But, That's you know, we're blessed with three, three handsome boys, uh, nine, seven, and four years old. So I think... You know, our journey is not perfect, but it's beautiful because, you know, the Bible says that the Lord makes everything beautiful in its yeah, time. So yeah. we do have a lot of wonderful testimonies of God's faithfulness. Praise God. Thank you. Okay. After the gentleman, now the lady has spoken. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, uh, my name is Lanre Ajibadi, and my full name is Olanre Waju, which I'm always proud to interpret. As what does it mean? Um, progressive wealth. Amen. Progressive wealth. That's what it means. Um, like my wife said, we've been married for 10 years. It's been a very beautiful journey, ups and downs in it. And um, uh, the Lord is always on our side. That's where we are. Um, the beginning of the relationship was based on the foundation of his love and ups and downs because the Bible said that um, I did not promise everything was going to be perfect. But um, when those times comes, we've always been going back to the days and say, you know what, God, you are here. Um, how do we get over this? And it's just like, you know, we get over it and we face the beautiful world we live in. And here we are today, a decade. I mean, it turned a decade. I, I couldn't believe it. Yep. And here we are. Awesome. Awesome. So I want to hear today, we're going to do this in several parts. So please relax and just enjoy this wonderful couple. Thank you for that background. So I want to know, how did you both meet? Because I think from my little knowledge about you, one of you had been living in the US for many years, one had not been. So tell me the whole story. We want to know, wherever you want to start from, just let it on. He tells it best. I'm going to let it go. <laughs> well, um, that'll be the glory. And I, I'm very grateful to God for the privilege of enjoying this world with my wife. Amen. Now, um, while I was in Nigeria, um, running my own small business, uh, um, catering, catering business in Nigeria, because I... I, I was working at <clears throat> Federal Palace Hotel as uh, uh, a waiter. And while I was doing that, I was going to school, uh, I finished my school, then um, my, I have uh, my mom's sister, aunt, my mom's cousin lives in the UK. So she has a friend. And a friend, she introduced me to a friend that, oh, I have a brother in Nigeria, and um, I'm praying for a good work for him. Amen. Do you have anyone that you can recommend? So, and 
uh, my auntie's friend said, you know what, don't worry, um, God is going to work. And I, I, me and my auntie's friend got into, you know, a relationship, we started talking and she's always encouraging me. And he said, Larry, I've, I've heard about you. Now I know you and I know the kind of person you are. So um, on this fateful day, I left my home. I, was, I went to my mom's place. So my phone rang and I picked up. It was the caller ID of my auntie's friend from London. Mm -hmm. She said, ah, Larry, how are you? He said, Larry, bow with me. I said, ah, I'm fine, auntie. He said, hold on, someone wants to speak with you. I said, okay, all right. So, and I picked, um, she, after handling her phone to the person, the person said, what's your name? I said, my name is Larry. Where are you from? I'm from Oyo State. Where are you? <laughs> I'm from Ivano. Okay. What do you do? Well, I'm a caterer. I, I serve banks and corporations breakfast in Lagos. I said, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to be coming to Nigeria. I'll be arriving in Nigeria in two weeks. And once I'm around, I'll call you. So I would like to meet with you. So like, who was this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apparently it was my 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 mother, mother in -law. my mother in law now, you know. <laughs> and I was like, so she said bye. Who is this? <laughs> wow. So get to me. I mean, so I called her. What a aunt. powerful woman. Yes. So she so when so I I, I called my auntie's friend back, I said auntie. What's going on? She said, God is working. I said, tell me what is going on. I don't know this asking about me like that. And I've given all the information because uh, it was through you. I said, don't worry, God is working. So um, two weeks after she arrived in Lagos, I went to meet with her at Lagos City Hall in Lagos. Excuse me. So it was at our friend's um, our son's wedding. Wow. So when I got there, entering the hall, I saw someone, someone just th threw something at me. So when I, by the time I look, it was my former boss. So what are you doing? I said, I came to see someone. And she said, who is that? I said, well, I don't know, but I look at that, that, that woman. <laughs> uh, you know, I said, oh, that's my mom's friend. I said, okay. So on getting to meet with her, you know, I said, hi, she's very, very social, extremely social. So, hi, how are you, my son-in-law? I was like, what? Excuse you? <laughs> what? I was like, really? So sit down, started talking. He said, uh, well, there's nothing to panic. My, my daughter is not disabled. She's beautiful. She's this and that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I uh, was like, OK. <laughs> no, before she said that, she said, oh, I have a daughter. Before, I, before she said that, I have a daughter in the US. <laughs> And as a mother, I should be concerned in court. <laughs> and she's not that, you know, nothing is wrong with her, but because she's reading the book too much. <laughs> she's a PhD, come on. Yeah. So and she's going to be a professor. I said, that's my concern. She can be whatever she wants to be after, um, after in, in, in a marriage, but this is the time. I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. And she said, "Are you scared that she was advocating for her daughter?" Um, hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I wasn't even listening to her. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. I so you were not. You, everything was coming in and going out. Like yeah, I, I don't really know listen. what you want, but yeah, stay away I, from I, me. You know. <laughs> so why all this? In my mind, I was like, okay, so you know, <laughs> and I wasn't really listening. But okay. And she said, I would like to eat something. I said, I'm fine. I'm not eating. I said, eat. Very, you know, she kind of make it made me feel, you know, relaxed. And I said, so she now said, you know, it's not that I'm desperate or my daughter is desperate, it's just that <laughs> I'm just concerned that, you know, she finds some and um some your auntie's friend told me about you. And here's the thing I want you to do. I'm gonna give you an email. I'm also going to tell her that somebody's going to email her, but 
I'm not going to give her a number. You be like, you, you, you do the man, talk to her. So when she was saying that, I said, what is this woman doing? I, I should email someone I've not seen. I don't know how she looks like, you know, I'm like, okay. So it was, a, it, was, it was something I could not discuss with people for an advice because in my, I have never had that, I have never experienced that, that kind of thing before. So and I was like, and at that point, it was a point in my life that I needed someone to be serious with or a serious relationship. Yeah. So I, I could, I, the only person I told a friend of mine, I said, the only, so when I got home, I told my friend said, what do you want to do? I said, well, I don't know. I just email. So I sent an email and everything. How long was... after you got the email, did you send the email? So um, this started around um, 2010, uh, March, February, March. That was before our birthday in April. Yeah, it was just around that time. Yes. So. And I can hear your voice now. That's good. Yeah. It's beautiful because you talked about having three men. If you have three men and we can't hear them, <laughs> something is wrong. So that's <laughs> good. Keep talking. I'm enjoying you. Keep talking. Yeah. So I sent that email to her. I introduced myself. And um, did you send your picture? No, I did not. I did not. Why not? Uh, I did not because it wasn't something I, I wasn't like, let me just respect the whole woman, you know. I'm going to tell on you. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't say that. I didn't, I didn't do that. Um, but when she replied my email and I asked that, oh, she also, I also emailed to request a phone number and I asked when is, when is a good time, you know, to always um, speak to her. And she said, you can call me. So, and um, what else? So at some point when I was emailing, calling, her response was so like, this guy is disturbing me. I like, I'll just call her mom. I said, your daughter is not responding to me. I'm, I don't have time for this. <laughs> you know, and said, don't worry, don't worry. I know her. She's doing this, she's doing that. So, so let I, me ask you a question. Okay. Did you actually pause to think like maybe you might be interested in her? Or not during all this? Uh, those are my often thoughts. Okay. At, at night. So she kept you awake at night. Yes. Even though you had not met her. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And what a... were your concerns? Because you're trying to understand how you got here. Because I want other people to understand that there is no script out there, it's a personal experience with God. Mm -hmm. how did you navigate because if you're staying up at night to think about this strange girl you've never met that you're suddenly having to engage one way or the other how did that feel for you please well <clears throat> the thing there is um then i my my feelings were let me give it a shot let me just engage in conversation uh, I wasn't expecting to, to, to move it to a level of commitment, mm -hmm. you know, within that period, because it was 2010. Um, one of my concerns was, uh, how, how could I be taught, how can I be engaging with someone I've not seen, there is no feelings, you know, not that I've seen a picture somewhere, or Lord, I've, I've Somebody, it was just like something just came, okay. uh, take and chew it, you know. <laughs> so uh, it wasn't something that I wasn't, I, I did not expect it to get to any level, you know. But um, as God would have it. And one thing I also um, did was that I, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a conversation I, was, I engaged a few of my friends with. I wasn't telling, I only had one guy, one of my friends, a good friend of mine, because we always tell ourselves the truth and say, you know what, uh, Larry, you know, I don't know, but what's your feeling? What, what do you think? You know, I said, what do you think? Tell me. 
if you were in my shoe, what would you do? You know, and what would he do? What did he tell you was gonna do? And he said, Barry, it's hard to to get into this kind of situation without you know seeing the person for not having feelings. It's different that you know she is 13, 14,000 miles away. Miles away, yes. And not that I've seen her on Facebook, not that I've seen her somewhere. It was just so, some. This about. is really a blind relationship, totally blind. Yes. So I'm going to stop you there. Thank you so much. We're not done yet, but I want to hear from your wife because how did you get into getting emails from this guy? What happened on your end? Help me connect the dots. Sure. But we had Facebook then. We connected on Facebook. Yeah, but it wasn't... Um, At the beginning, no. Like, yeah, it was after like a couple of phone calls. Then I asked you, okay, I asked her, I, can I talk please? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sure. I remember I asked her that um, if uh, she's on Facebook, I, I don't think you were on Facebook that time. You actually joined Facebook and you also went to do your nails. And I asked you to do something for me. <laughs> 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 I remember I asked her, so, you know, I, I guess we were talking and it was after her birthday. So this started around February, March, mm -hmm. February is her birthday. And I, my brain started having a rethink, a reset. So I celebrated her birthday. I remember I called you and I said, um, happy birthday. And said, well, what are you guys doing? I said, well, we go I'm going out with my friends to, to celebrate, celebrate your, your birthday. birthday. Wow. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, okay. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. So wow. I asked her to, I'd like to see her on Facebook. And I guess we, I don't know how that happened, but she actually did her nails. You remember? I think I remember that. You asked me to send a picture. I, yes. I think I read the room. Yeah. She sent a picture with, you know, she went to do pedicures or, or something. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. After three months, that's good. So. Tell me how it all started. Since your mom was very clear in her mind, this is your man. How did you, that happen on your end? Right, thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm trying, I'm having flashbacks. So I think um, you did mention something I think is really key that this is a very personal experience and you can learn from others, but you, we have to be sensitive to the Lord, the Holy Spirit on what our journey is. And that, that only comes by waiting on the Lord and being sensitive and um, also with people around you that can help you in the journey. And you can't really just duplicate someone else's journey. So I think that that's a very uh, critical piece in both how we met and our marriage so far. Um, so what, you know, I, I said that because it was really, the whole process was birthed through prayer. Um, the personal, like I said, the personal experience being I was probably like 29, 30. I had no desire to be married until I was very late in my, in my 20s. I think I completed my PhD. I was actually doing a postdoctoral fellowship. And somewhere along there, maybe I was around 29, 30 when I felt like, oh, I should be married. But by my family standard, <laughs> that was really late, right? Because I have, my mom has six daughters. Uh, most of them were married before they were 25. I think the person who got married the latest was probably 26 or 27. So 29, 30, my, my, my family is like dinosaur years, like, oh, <laughs> like, OMG, what is wrong with her? <laughs> and she's not only gotten a PhD, she's doing a postdoc and she doesn't even care. You know, I'm, I wasn't very outgoing or social. I, I'm not the person, I'm not at parties, you know, I'm, I wasn't a party person or social person. I would just go to church. And I'd be in the lab and I had a few circle of friends. So I definitely wasn't the social butterfly. Um, I'm very, very simple person. So I guess all of those just to my family were just not very good signals of where this thing could go, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I guess my mom was asking. So the story that she was at a party in London and the person had asked, that auntie said, um, you know, your daughter, my younger sister, she's like, she only knew my younger sister and said, Bossa, is Bossa still single is she available and my mom said no boss i just got married but our older sister is available <laughs> so, so you were miss available <laughs> i was available that's it but then you know the, the the back story is you know that you don't see in all of that it's just the prayers once i felt like i was ready i started praying more about it and asking the lord about it and you know putting in prayer i, I remember before my mom went to london 
she had visited, she was in the US, she had visited me in Houston where I was a postdoctoral fellow. And we, we had prayed together. We even fasted together and she had prayed. So, you know, I said, there's a whole spiritual journey you don't see, you see just what comes up in the, in the yeah, front yeah. view. So we had been praying a lot and I'd really been working with the Lord to get a uh, revelation on this, you know, you know, marriage and who my husband is and the Lord guiding me. So what happened, what was really interesting was my mom had just left and was in London and that weekend at the party he described earlier. Mm -hmm. That Monday morning, I was on my way to the lab. I was working in a research lab and I heard the wedding song, uh, Here Comes the Bride. Oh. I usually took a, a shuttle, a bus <clears throat> from my apartment to the lab because because of parking, parking was expensive. So on the bus, I heard that song. It almost like a spiritual song, but I heard that song and I was like, what's with this wedding song playing in my head? And not long after, I think I was still on that bus when my mom's call came in and she said, oh, I met someone at a party this weekend in London and there's a guy in Nigeria. And I was like, forget it, like Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, I'd been in the US for 14 years, I think, 13, about 13, 14 years. So any thought of meeting someone, I prayed for a spouse, but there was never any consideration that I would come from Nigeria. Especially because I lived in Houston. Houston is probably the Nigerian capital of the US. There are a lot of Nigerians. So it just didn't ever, it never occurred to me that I would find a you Nigerian. You don't find country. anybody in Houston and you have to go all the way to Nigeria. <laughs> Important. <Nigeria. laughs> I really just wasn't, it was just not on my radar. I never opened my heart that I would be meeting someone from Nigeria. So I just thought I was like, not interested. I just said, mommy, stop it. <laughs> but she was relentless. Um, and then she she called me back probably after she got to Nigeria or maybe a couple of days later. And I, re I reported her to all my sisters. I have older sisters. I was like, can you, you guys just tell mom? Because my sister in London also got involved. She's like, mom, don't listen to mommy. We don't even know this guy. Who is he? You want her to meet someone else? So all my sisters got involved. They're like, yeah, just leave her alone. Nigeria, this guy in Nigeria. So, so that was all about, there was a lot of prayer going on. So when um, he, you know, then she called me back a couple of days. She's like, can I, she said, can I give him your number? I was like, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And then she called back maybe a couple of days later. I was like, can I give him your email? So in my mind, I was like, cause she was being relentless. I just said, yeah, give him my email, sure. But at the back of my mind, that was gonna be junk mail. <laughs> so that was the plan. Cause really that was just not, I wasn't really, I wasn't open at all. Yeah, you didn't tell me this. Yeah, it was gonna be junk <laughs> mail. I was just, so his first few emails, I was very dismissive. Just, I don't even know why I answered. I thought, I guess because my mom was involved I just would reply, but they were very dismissive. I was probably very rude. But what kind of happened along the line was my mom was on Yahoo and one of my older sisters used to kind of read things through my mom's email. So he started chatting with my mom on Yahoo chat, the Yahoo email, yeah. Yahoo Messenger. Yahoo, yes. And one day my sister, cause she snoops in my mom's email, was on my mom's email on Yahoo chat and he messaged my mom. And, but it was my sister responding. So my sister started chatting with him. I don't even know if she disclosed that she was the one. Yeah, she told me. Yeah. Oh, I think so. She disclosed <laughs> my sister in Maryland. So she disclosed <laughs> that she was um, my sister. And they started, so it developed a relationship with my older sister through Yahoo Messenger. So my wow. sister calls me and she's someone I respect a lot, especially spiritually, because I know she's a very spiritual woman and she doesn't take things for granted. So she called me and she said, so like maybe we should pray more about this guy. You know, I just have a feeling. And so when she got involved, and because I respect her, so I just honored her. And she's like, why don't we pray and fast? I think pray and fast for three days. And she told me, she said, let's pray on Genesis 24, Isaac and Rebecca. <laughs> so I, I, because I honor and respect her, I just, I kind of succumbed. And I said, okay, let's pray. Maybe there's something I'm missing. And at this point we're having email exchanges. And he had been messaging my sister and she was kind of, I guess, liking him. <laughs> so so we, we prayed for three days and we were praying on Isaac and Rebecca and she will have me read it and we'll pray together for three days. And I think at the end of the three days, I forget the scripture, the Lord, uh, I think it was um, 1 Peter 5.10, after you have waited a little while, that the Lord will perfect, establish, strengthen, etc. Mm -hmm. So all of that was going on, right? It seems like a strange story, but there was a lot of prayer and it was a spiritual journey. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I think after that prayer, my heart became a little bit more open and we started doing Skype. I don't think I gave him my phone number still, but 
I let him Skype with me. <laughs> so we started, you know, speaking on Skype. Then my birthday came. And then we decided to pray and fast together too, along yeah. the line. And I just told the Lord, I was like, because this wasn't really part of my agenda. I said, if he's the one, you know, because then he's, it was in the demographic. I was, I think by then 30. It was in a demographic where it's difficult to get visas because he's young. Mm -hmm. He's four years older than me. So he was, would have been 33, 34. And said, I was like, if you really, if this is your plan for me, they'll give him a visa, right? Um, to come and visit at least. So, and I just kind of left it there. And we were praying that he would get the visa because the chances that he would get it were very slim because of his demographic. And they really did give him the visa <laughs> at the end of the day. So he ended up coming here and... Um, Awesome. Yeah. So we're going to stop there today. Thank you both. I have learned a lot about how it all started. So we'll pick up from here next time. To our viewers, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having Larry and Adebusola Ajibadi on the show today. Stay with us and we'll be right back next time. Thank you very much. God bless you. I need those